Alcohol increases your sympathetic tone, so it increases sort of the adrenaline signaling in your body. And the result of that is, even if it helps you fall asleep, sleep is lower quality on average. You have become known as one of the world's top jet lag jet lag experts, and you've developed a, a product to help people with that. Now, so how does one avoid jet lag? And then the second part of my question will be, if you've got jet lag, how do you overcome that? 100%. So... What's really novel about what we do is, um, based on work I was doing with Navy SEALs and fighter pilots, we discovered that the pressure changes in flight and the low oxygen environment cause an inflammatory response. So if you think about how you just feel when you fly normally, you probably don't feel as good when you get off a plane normally. Maybe your gut's a little more off, you're more tired, brain fog, joints don't feel as good. Uh, it varies by person. But when, especially when you take these long flights, you get this quite strong inflammatory response. And that actually is a big part of the reason you can't shift your circadian rhythm. So what we figured out how to do was um, build an algorithm that can tell you when to take specific supplements that can prevent the inflammation from starting and then tamp down whatever keeps going. And then combine supplements, meal timing, sleep timing, insulin signaling, all these factors together to shift your circadian rhythm really quickly and because you don't have that inflammatory overlay, we can shift your circadian rhythm and expect you to sleep well your first night in Tokyo, Sydney, Dublin, uh, wherever you're going, really anywhere in the world. So how does that look practically? What, do, what does one take? What does one, you know, and how long before the flight? What do they do during the flight? What do they do when they get off the flight? Yeah, so, you know, my goal when designing that product is like, it can't, tell you to start three days before. Like people are busy, they've got things going on. Like they just can't, they just don't want to or can't afford to do it days before. So we've been able to get the protocol down to, you know, put everything, you put your flights and answer a few simple questions in an app, in our app. The app then gives you a custom program, starts the morning you leave. It tells you, hey, here's your optimal time to wake up. And then it'll tell you when to eat, sleep and use different supplements in the kit. To make life easy, the supplements come in blister packs. You can just like pop them out when you're on a plane. There's not a bottle to carry. Um, and you're just sort of walked through, hey, take two of the red pills and one of the gold pills right now. And in six hours, it'll tell you to do the next thing. Um, and then we also incorporate blue light blocking glasses. Um, to your point, can be very effective at helping manage circadian rhythm. And the other piece that I think we've really brought to the fore is insulin helps reset your circadian rhythm peripherally. So obviously we think a lot about your central or your brain circadian rhythm with sleep, but your gut and your liver and your, your adrenals, these other organs have circadian rhythms as well. And insulin is one of the hormones that helps reset that, which may be why it's kind of a challenge when people eat really late and kind of mess up their sleep. And so we figured out how to cause a temporary insulin increase um, at the right time to get your body kind of to peripherally reset and then stop the negative effects of that with the supplements after it. Um, and so this is sort of the point of like, we, to do this at, you know, 90 plus percent of people going to Asia or Europe and, and sleeping well, it's gotta be a really integrated program. And the only way to make that easy, if an app is just telling you like, Hey, do X, do Y, do Z with a notification each time. What's the name of your jet lag prevention product? So the product is called Flykit, F-O-Y-K-I-T-T, -T, two T's. Um, and uh, yeah, we sell it you know, on our website, fount.bio, F-O-U-N-T dot B-I-O, or at flykit.com. And uh, excited to be uh, announcing two new Olympic team partnerships coming up soon. Uh, we just launched a new partnership with Yotel, the hotel brand. Um, so really excited to be getting... Um, that product out there used by uh, more than a dozen pro and Olympic teams at this point. Wonderful. I am going to try your fly kit on an upcoming flight from Bogota, Colombia to London, England, which is coming up uh, in about six weeks from now. So I'm going to get my hands on one of your fly kits and I'm going to go through the app. And I, it seems like that's what I do, right? I, I punch my... Uh, flight details into an app, and then it tells me what I'll need to do. And then you send me out the yeah, relevant. We ship you a physical kit. It's like about the size of a first class amenity kit. 
So it slips right into a backpack or anything and it has everything you need in it. Um, supplements, glasses, although I'm sure you've got a great pair of Swannies already to throw mm-hmm. in there. Um, and the app will walk you through every step and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it should be a great experience. Yeah. Amazing. Is there something that you see folks doing incorrectly on overnight flights, red eye flights, for example, irrespective of whether they've got the fly kit or not, what do people do that is actually contributing even more to their jet lag? Yeah. So there's a couple things. The most surprising one I find is that, you know, everyone's heard the recommendation, get light at day, during daytime at your destination. But there's actually a three hour period on some trips where you don't want light during day at your destination because your brain is still responding to signals from your home time zone. And so that's why, you know, we like the app being able to give you recommendations because there can be these totally counterintuitive things. Um, the, I think most of the other general recommendations are pretty good. Although one thing that we do differently, there's a lot of recommendations out there to fast when you're flying for jet lag. And fasting can help people because it tends to reduce inflammation. But when, when we can handle the inflammation with our supplement protocol, then we're also, instead of fasting, we're going to have you eat. So you're feeding your brain. And it's sort of the best of both worlds. Because the only issue with fasting is it can raise stress hormone levels and deprive your brain of nutrients a bit when you're stressed and traveling. So um, I think the light thing at very specific times uh, is, is interesting. And I think the other thing people do that they kind of know probably isn't a good idea uh, is drinking on planes. So alcohol on planes is sort of a double whammy. Alcohol increases your sympathetic tone. So it increases sort of the adrenaline signaling in your body. And the result of that is even if it helps you fall asleep, sleep is lower quality on average. And then that higher adrenaline stress hormone levels can drive inflammation. And now if you have inflammation from the flying plus inflammation from the alcohol, that can be a double whammy that really hits you the next couple of days. So we fly kit helps regardless of whether you drink or not, but we do recommend that you not drink on planes. Well, I might go a step further and say, I just recommend you don't drink, but then I'm biased because I have a company called Alcohol Free Lifestyle and this is the Alcohol Free Lifestyle podcast. <laughs> yes. Well, I mentioned that not, not just because of this, but you know, what's interesting is if we think about the this sort of N and one experiment concept I've shared, mm. it's to say that everyone's different. Yes. What we know is that almost everyone's sleep is disrupted by alcohol some more than others and some it requires more than others, but I've ran the experiment with myself and you know what, even one drink reduces my energy, my mood, everything the next day so much that I just don't want to. Like I I don't have a hard rule where I couldn't drink. I had a sip of wine for the first time in years the other day. Like I don't have a hard rule. I I regret it. I just didn't feel as good afterwards. So I don't, um, I don't have a hard rule, but I just essentially haven't found the situation where I want to anymore. Mm. 